So, salam alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Thank you so much for your time. So, you're most welcome. Yeah. So today I'm going to uh, discuss some other topics. Um, so as we are living in Germany since uh, four years almost. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, we have so many issues in Germany that the people in my country from Bangladesh they are having some concern about uh, the waiting period in the visa process. Uh, for example, in India. They need three months to get the visas uh, uh, to start in Germany and come here. But in my country, Bangladesh, we are having some issues. For example, they have to wait more than uh, more than one year. So, do mm-hmm. you um, do you have some ideas on it? Can you tell I, me? I I have no idea. I'm really sorry. I can't talk about this because I have a Romanian passport. It's an EU passport. I never had to apply for a visa to come to Romania or to Germany because I can just move across the border to any European country and live there like any citizen. So anything to do with pre-visa process and applications, especially in countries that are really far from me, I have zero knowledge on. Okay, thank you so much for your honesty. So you're a very honest person. So the next question is very important. I think it's the same for everyone. It's a general question. When I was in my country, I am uh, I was work uh, for for more than six years in my country, and mm-hmm. I always wanted to um, think out of the box to go go to other countries and study. But it took six years uh, to take this decisions because I didn't have that courage. I had so many uh, false fascinations in my mind. In Germany is a new country. I don't know the language. So. Um, what is your advice for people uh, who have this kind of situations in countries like middle uh, third world countries like bangladesh india pakistan how should they uh, broad their mind or how should they plan or what is your experience uh, what should you well say? i'm very sure that to move to a different country especially a country where you don't know the language quite well is oh. going to be one of the hardest decisions of your life because it does literally change your life you know live, staying in a country and moving to a different country will change your life but think of it like this you are the people who first migrated to another country so we're talking about a few hundred years ago they went on boats for months they didn't know if they're going to survive the trip most of them did not survive the trip okay when they moved through like three months on the boat you know you, you would have diseases you would have storms everything in our time it's much easier much safer to travel we have communications you know like that back then you go for years and years you hear nothing from back home now we have instant communication so my is much 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 easier now to actually move to a new country if someone is afraid they have to list down their fears what am i afraid of what is the worst scenario that could happen okay so once you can say truly really the worst scenario that could happen if things go wrong and think about yourself am i ready to accept the worst outcome Am I ready to accept what could go worse? If you're ready, then do it. If you're not ready, then think about it. What's the probability that this will happen? If it is a high probability, then maybe don't do it. If it is a low probability, then just do it. So prepare yourself. What is the worst outcome? And trust me, 99.99% of the time, even the worst outcome would still be better than staying back home because the regret after years, let's say that he did not take the decision to move out. And after 30 years staying in his country, in Bangladesh, India, Pakistan, whatever. And then he going to realize that I have done nothing in my life. And then he's going to think backward at the time that he could have changed his life and think, I wish I have taken that opportunity to start a new life, but it's too late now. So the regret is going to last for years and decades to come. So that would be my only answer. Thank you so much. Um, now I am going to ask you other questions, uh, which is related to these topics. Um, before someone selecting a country, uh, which country should they apply as an immigrant or as a student or whatever? So what are the, are the things they should focus on their mind before they selecting the countries? Should they go USA? Should they go Canada? What is your opinion on it? 
Well, the thing is that at the moment, uh, a lot of countries need immigrants, especially the US, Canada, the UK, they need immigrants, but they are pretending they don't need an immigrants, but they actually do need immigrants. Uh, Germany and France and a lot of European countries also need immigrants, but obviously they need the high end quality immigrants that produce this country. They don't want to pay for education for these immigrants. They just want a result. Egoistic, yes, but this is how the world is. You know, think of a company. The company wants to hire someone who is already educated, who can day one start producing for the company. They want to want to hire someone and then train him for five years, and then after That's five years the investment, then start producing. Okay, so if your audience, if they have a high level degree, with a high level, I mean masters in this case, in industries related to engineering and IT. The chances that they can find a job. I know people who are working in IT in Düsseldorf from Pakistan who directly got a job from Pakistan. Like they applied from a job from Pakistan to a company in Düsseldorf knowing no German and they still know no German. So they moved to Düsseldorf knowing no German. They started to work and because the company is in IT and normally IT companies are becoming more international companies. So the company is more than happy to just speak English in the whole company. Yes, obviously the Germans speak German, but English is a working language for the IT companies. And they live in Düsseldorf. Düsseldorf as a city, if you know, don't know German, you can easily live in Düsseldorf because it's such a, it's a state, it's a capital of the Nordrhein-Westfalen state, and it's an incredibly international city. So by living in Düsseldorf or Köln, Cologne would be in English, one doesn't actually, if they work and they have like a good job, doesn't need to know German. Like on your daily life, you can survive quite well. And there's so the international community. I'm not talking about the Bangladeshi or Pakistan or anything. I'm talking about the international community in these cities is quite wide. So if they come from Bangladesh and they want to find Bangladeshi people, they're not going to find them here. And not, not in the quantity. They might find the one, two, few friends, but not like in a whole, uh, like a community with everything Bangladeshi with a Bangladeshi store, Bangladeshi school, Bangladeshi mosque, they're not going to find them. But if they come from, you know, they're going to contact with the international community, other people who speak English, they're going to find, in my opinion, a very welcoming environment of international community from other countries that could be in, from the African continent, from the American continent, from the Asia, obviously a huge start from the Asian continent, but um, they will or not, but and they will have a good, you know, community around them. Okay. So, if they are really qualified mm -hmm. in certain regions, uh, not regions, uh, certain uh, areas of expertise in IT, mostly engineering, then they can directly apply here, and probably companies will have them, and then the company will work on the visa for them, so they don't have to, you know. Because, you know, you need a lot of paperwork. Germans love paperwork anyway, you know that. Uh, then the company will actually work to apply for the visa for the international um, the foreign office and all of that. Okay, the thing is, uh, uh, actually, you are focusing a lot on IT peoples. Let's forget about IT peoples. The thing about in general, for example, uh, anyone uh, starting in any subject, doesn't matter. If they want to choose uh, to go abroad and, and and live a peaceful life. So what kind of uh, key factor they should focus on their mind? For example, I, let, let me make it easier for you. Should I choose a country for long-term benefit that I can be a citizen of that country? Or should I think the short-term benefit? I will go work 10 years and I will go back to my country. So what, what is your opinion regarding that? Well, it depends on the person. It depends on the family situation. I'm so asking what is your opinion? Yeah. Family. Yeah, what but the uh, opinion is irrelevant in this case. My, my opinion is irrelevant because it does depend on the individual person. Okay, there is no you, like one. Can you give me ideas what, what what can be the best practices? For example, when I applied from <laughs> to, to Germany, so I had a mindset that I want to go to Germany and I want to stay for a long time. That was my plan, and that was and Again, I that was it right. Depends on the person and their own. What do they want to know? If they want to go back to the country then going to the US or Canada is easier in a way that you don't have to learn a new language. You just go there, work and then go back. Uh, coming to Germany, you have to invest a lot in language. So unless you actually want to stay in Germany for a long time and actually want to settle down here, the investment, like work, you can't, there is nothing like coming for two years and going back. That doesn't happen. By the time you come here, by the time you actually work yourself 
to become you know in a, in a good position it will take two years anyway okay. okay i mean you know like you've just uh, you know you've been here for three years and now you've you've yeah, finished but, your master but so your you're last one. yeah your last um you know, just to say about the it people's because if you are focusing too much on it people's so then people will think that germany needs only it people then what will happen to other people so well, no it's not the it people but um germany is an industrial country yes okay so if, if you work in in certain other areas the probability of you finding a job in germany is going to be incredibly low because germany doesn't need those type of workers we're talking about here companies needing workers and they were going to invest because a company bringing a worker from outside they have to invest a lot of money in that person because they have to provide evidence to the german government to the foreign office here that they have been looking for a quite a long like i don't know maybe a year or two for a person to fill that job in germany and then they have to provide evidence that they have been looking in the eu as well and after they provide evidence that okay we couldn't find this it specialist in germany we couldn't find this it specialist in europe then we need this it specialist from bangladesh otherwise they would not get a visa they would not be allowed to bring the person from Bangladesh because this is the law here. Okay, this is the law in the EU as well, not only here. So for the company to invest so much to bring a person from outside through a visa, that's a lot of investment. And at the moment, the companies who are willing, who are willing to put that investment in the worker are the IT and engineering companies. Other companies are not willing to do that because number one, they can easily find, maybe they're not easy to find in Germany, but can they easily find it in the whole EU. They can bring people from Romania, from Bulgaria, from Poland, from Lithuania. So in other regions, that's why I'm focusing on IT, because at the moment, the boom is in IT. Because this is where majority... In IT, there is a boom in workers. So they... Yeah. Yeah, so that's why the IT branch now is the one bringing workers from outside. Because whenever I meet international workers, when I ask them, what did they do? IT, all of them. Like I haven't met someone who said, I came from outside to work in an architectural company, or I came from outside to work as a teacher, or I came because those do not hire people from the outside. Okay. And that's why it's very important to put the real mindset is that it depends on what your degree is. For example, Germany at the moment needs more IT people. Canada needs maybe probably more health worker people. So a lot of people from health professions go to Canada. It depends on the country and a specific time. You might be lucky if you're in IT now, but maybe maybe in 10 years, the market situation will be saturated with IT. They don't want IT anymore. But then, because there's many old people here, you know, they're more becoming old, they need more health professional workers for these old people home. And then there will be a boom in that region. And they will ask, okay, so anyone from Bangladesh who has a certificate or a degree in nursing, they will be giving a visa quite quickly. So it depends on the time and your luck. So if you are lucky that you have the right skills for the right country at the right time, like 20 years ago, they were asking for a different type of immigrants. So every decade there is a new, so there is a market, new market. There's market gets saturated with the workers and then they work you know, on a new different market. I presume at some point, the IT market will be saturated. They brought all the engineers, all the IT people they want, and that's it. Then we fill the market. But then it seems that in the next 10 years, the new market is going to be for health professionals because of the aging population. You have more aging people. You need people to take care of them. You need nurses to take care of them. So people from the healthing profession, that I, my, that's my own opinion, by the way. It's not related to anything, you know, statistics. Like if, if I don't but agree, what if, I feel, if I don't agree, what on I, feel, what I see around is that yes, in the more people are going to retire, more people will take care. So I presume in Germany, the next lucky people in the next ten years will be the health professionals to work exactly in the old people's homes. This particular niche market okay so um, uh, as per my opinion as per my experience in germany I, I i've been here for four years and i have seen also this kind of scenario that you said that they need a lot of it people i understand everything but the thing is as you said this it field right now they are they have shortage on it fields but after 10 years maybe they have new evaluations so or they're looking for new people right i agree with yes, that like five years ago they didn't need it now they yeah. do okay so but it changed every decade 
Yeah, but the thing is here, for example, I'm a production engineer. I have a degree in production engineering. So I know production engineering will be forever, maybe next 50 years. But the people who is who have IT skills, if they don't upgrade themselves, like now, now the biggest threat is chat GPT, AI tools, and Google is firing 1,000 people. As, as you know, the last day, right? Oh, yeah. Well, well, can we, for example, imagine this, imagine like uh, we tell people to come to work in the health profession, healthcare the, profession, the, the and then some the, Japanese company, Mitsubishi in Japan, creates the robot that uh, takes, uh, yeah, like really, a robot, I, you have AI robot, it has all the, you know, the hands, all that, and that robot will be take care of old people. They will produce these robots in a mass scale cheaply, and then all the IT, uh, all the IT, sorry, all the healthcare okay. professionals, the nurses, will be like out of job yeah. because the robots are taking their jobs. No one can predict this kind of future. Like there is absolutely no way, even the professionals at prediction, you know, the economists who predict trends, they can't even do that. Like when you first came, when I first, you know, three years ago when I moved to Germany, even the word AI didn't even ex barely existed anywhere. And in what, two years? No, not even two years, like one year, I presume it has been like a game changer. Everywhere is now AI, all of that. Who could have predicted two years ago that the AI will, you know, they knew that the AI was coming at some point, but they did not know that they said, okay, maybe it will take 20 years for it to establish itself. In one year, it has changed the whole game. Who knows in the next two years what's going to happen, let alone in 10 years. Maybe. So no one can make a prediction. And so, so the, so the fact that we cannot make predictions, plan as you can, whatever, like say, we Muslims, we believe in Qadr, we believe in the Allah plan, whatever we plan, there is a bigger plan. So we have just to be, you know, go with the flow, let's see. Exactly, but the, uh, yeah, and, and I should also add over here, the focus should be, if you came as an IT, it doesn't matter what kind of skills you have, people should have a mindset to upgrade themselves, everyday learning yeah. new moves and new things, otherwise, anytime they get fired or they can, they can be, you know, someone take... I mean, I'm very sure, just because you I'm very sure that if anyone comes here with working in IT, I, I think the culture of the company will directly give him the idea that because he sees all his colleagues are upgrading themselves, learning something new. So they will have like an, it was in that, let's say branch in the working in IT. I think there is a culture of upgrading yourself, unless you are a very low skilled worker. And let's say you cannot produce much. In that case, you will be replaced by an AI incredibly soon. So I, so I don't think the company will even hire someone low skilled worker because they know if we wait one year they are is going to do the work anyway for a fraction of the price if not for free in a way yeah so um now that the, the, there's a the lot of questions comes in my mind right now so now let's focus on this is one issues that people should upgrade themselves but thing, second thing is that uh, the people who came from different countries or with different cultures Bangladesh yeah. have their own mindset and they came to Germany, they work with Germans. So personally, I believe people should have to have a lot of ideas about German work cultures. So what is your uh, what is your uh, experience? What is your opinion? How should people uh, integrate with German work cultures as soon as possible? So the thing is about German is that they are, are very direct. OK, in our cultures, we come from a very a polite culture. We don't say what we mean and we don't mean what we say and all of that. So, But we understand the, the, the subtlety of our communication. In German, it's different. It, it is a very, we perceive Germans are very rude. Yes. Okay. Or aggressive. But it's not their rude. They, German culture is a direct culture. They say what they mean and they mean what they say. And then they do it directly. So once the people start to work here, they will notice that their bosses, their whoever, they're going to be very direct to them. Do this, don't do that. You, you know, you screwed here. They are incredibly direct. In our culture, the idea would be given, but in a very like in a in a in a different way. But it's not. But eventually, it's the idea is going to be the same. Like you did not do well. Okay, so when people from our cultures come here, they have like a shock because they think, oh my God, they're very rude, they're very racist, they're very this, very that. But this, they are exactly the same to other Germans. So if you 
even look at how Germans interact with each other, is also a very dark culture. They directly say what they mean, and they mean what they say. So we perceive that, and then we have an issue with that because we have our ego as well. You know, like, oh, he insulted my ego. I feel sad now, all of that. Don't feel like that. So you have really to have, let's say, to develop a very tough skin here. Okay, so whatever comes, just accept it as it is. Don't think twice about it. It is how their culture is. And then the fact that we are working here, we are the new one here. We are, let's say, the guests here. We should adapt to their, because they are the majority and it's their country, we should adapt to their culture and not vice versa. I cannot expect my German friends and my boss to adapt to me as the newcomer. Because that is like, no one, imagine like someone from Germany going to Bangladesh and then telling every Bangladeshi to become like Germany because he doesn't want to become, you know, accustomed to the local culture. That wouldn't work and vice versa, it wouldn't work here as well. So. Cultural issues are incredibly important. So whoever is going to move to Germany or any new country with a totally different culture, they have to really uh, adapt and read beforehand. So there are books about the topic. I think there's a, a book called The Map of Cultures. Map of Cultures. It's on Amazon. It's an incredibly good book to explain the difference between Asian cultures and Western cultures. And then it gives you this kind of all this idea which cultures are direct one, which cultures are indirect one, how we should adapt to that, uh, which cultures are um, what we call heavy loaded with meaning. So the French, when they say something, there is a implicit implication that you understand the hidden meaning in the words, even it wasn't uttered. So Germans have issues with French people because the Germans are very direct, the French are totally indirect, and because of this two different thinking levels, they cannot communicate quite well between each other. Because the French say, why is the German so rude? And the Germans say, why doesn't the French say what they mean? And there's like a conflict here. And that's between Germany and France, which are like next to each other. So let alone Germany and Bangladesh, which is like Asian, far, far away, and a Muslim country as well. So it's like three totally different levels of, you know, how far it is. So and anyone from Bangladesh, they have to really have develop a tough, tough skin very quickly. Otherwise, it will be a painful period for them at the beginning. So um, actually, what you said, uh, the, 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 the cultural difference between France and Germans, actually, we are following a bit of French culture because our people, for Bangladeshi people, they don't want to speak some 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 topics not so directly for example yeah. the personal issues or some other issues they don't want to be so direct so yeah but the germans i also worked uh, i'm also working in a company so i've seen that my boss they're so direct it doesn't matter how i feel they don't care about it but sometimes i also feel felt that i also feel that oh, he's racist but it's not i was wrong now i understand that okay the, people should be like like my boss because if we are not direct then there are so many problems that will come in the in the future True. we can now and again some the up. question of racism say okay is he talking only to me like no. that but then if you really observe the person and if he talks to everyone including germans in the same way same manner then no that's that's part of being German. and there's this german companies are efficient and successful for a reason they are direct, okay? They try to reduce conflict of, you know, ambiguities. So, ah, did you mean this? No, you didn't mean that. No, no, no. I tell you exactly what I want and you tell me exactly how to talk to solve the problem. And because we both are direct to each other, we both can work in the same way very efficiently. So communication problems are taken away out. And because of that, I think that one of the things that makes German companies produce even though that Germany doesn't have any raw material, like Germany doesn't have iron, doesn't have mines, doesn't have petrol, oil, or anything like that. They import everything, but they import the iron, they import the metal, they import all raw materials, and they produce something of such a high quality that it would still be on the market in the world market, and in a good, it is high price, but everybody who buys German products knows it's a good quality that will last forever. 
Yeah, I agree that because I was... There's a reason. So that culture of being a direct person, I believe that contributes quite well to being a very efficient culture in manufacturing. Because in manufacturing, you need to be very efficient. And Germans are like that. Okay, uh, maybe recently you have uh, seen a news on, on a newspaper that Germany is uh, uh, exporting uh, auto vehicles in China. Yeah. You know about it, right? So good. So yeah, seeing that they are not, they cannot sell the product in China as they expected. That's why they're uh, they're going to find a lot of people from the automobile industries. So as you say, they're German are so direct, but the Chinese are not so direct. So how should <laughs> they use your... Well, it's not that. I lived in China for two years. I worked in China for two years. And I know yes. German cars in China, they are the luxury items. So a Mercedes in Germany is not the same Mercedes in China. But for, your, for, your, for your kind of information, I'm sorry to interrupt. For your kind of information, the, the, the Germany, they have decrease the price maybe six thousand euro but it's still it doesn't, yeah, but it, it doesn't matter because six thousand euro for the car price car prices in china is it's, it's, it's nothing okay uh, first of all china has to protect its own car industry and i understand the chinese point of view they have their own car industry they want to protect it they have incredibly high taxes on all imported products by the way it's not only german cars all imported products so when even if they reduce the price by six thousand for China is nothing. And number two, it's that the target audience or the target market for the German cars in China are not the normal people. They're not the middle class. We're talking about the upper class. A car in China, the same car in Germany that you can buy it for uh, 50,000 euros. In China would be 100,000 euro. And 100,000 euro for Chinese as income. Only the super rich can afford it. So the German market in China is a luxury market. And at the moment, China, the let's say, the market in China is being destabilized because a lot of those incredibly rich people, uh, they are losing money and stuff like that. So they're not buying the German luxury cars. Yes, when you sell luxury items, you have a high, incredibly high margin profit, incredibly high margin profit. But again, it's not a stable market because once any shake in the market happens, people will you know, say, okay, I'm not going to buy a Mercedes luxury car. I will just buy a Chinese luxury car. Well, it's still expensive for China, but it is cheap, way cheaper than the German one. But the German cars in China are but the, a question is, is, the question is of why German doesn't doesn't analyze those facts before they uh, selling the cars to. No, no, no. They know these facts. They know 100 percent. But Germany they, cannot produce cars. Okay. They cannot produce cheap cars to compete with the Chinese cheap cars. There is no way Germany can do that. But there is okay? there is biggest threat ahead. I have here the interview from one guy uh, who is dealing this project, who is working on this project. He said that uh, uh, the car industry in China and the, this project involved more than one million people. So the one million people are in threat. That's the biggest. I mean, the biggest threat in Germany. I mean, we're going to face in, in the next future. So I don't know next year. Yeah, but I mean, uh, by the way. People know that uh, Germany is famous for cars, but the car industry in Germany is not the biggest producer in the economy. People don't know that. They think it's a, a Germany economy, Germany's economy is based on selling cars. It's not true. Okay. All the car industry in Germany, it's, it's, it's less than 10%. Like it's, it's like a one figure digit. Uh -huh. So yes, it's a big blow for Germany, but it's not going to ruin the German economy. Uh, but just the perception because the German cars are very known. The German cars can be seen on the street. The German cars are known to be a status item. So if you're rich, you buy a Mercedes, you buy these kind of items. And that's why people perceive. But Germany produces way more products in other... The, Germany is one of the biggest countries in the chemical industry. But, but the stuff they produce is not directly for the consumer. They produce stuff to other companies, to other factories to use in their manufacturing process. So people don't know how much chemical products Germany exports. That is even a much bigger than the car industry, a much bigger part of the economy than the car industry. So if the chemical industry is destroyed in Germany, that's a blow, a big, huge blow for the economy. If the car industry disappears in the future, yes, it is a blow, but Germany will directly, you know, yes, there will be like, have like a meltdown for a little bit, but it will come back up again. And 
Okay. If China, because they have incredibly, you know, uh, Huawei, the phones. Uh, who thought that China was going to produce incredibly high quality phones in sh such a short time, like Huawei? And the price is really cheaper than Apple and Samsung. Look what happened. The same thing will happen with many other products. At some point, China will produce cars like Mercedes with the same quality, but maybe 10 times cheaper. It's just a matter of time. China is an incredibly industrial country. What would Germany do at that point? Because then China can produce probably Mercedes quality and even better than the Germans. So the Germans have to find a new market, a new niche in the market to stay afloat. Hopefully that will happen. I mean, I would trust Germans to do that. Okay. They are dark, they are rude, but they know how to solve problems. Okay, this is, this is, this is very good information. Thank you so much. And we have eight minutes. So can I take one more question? So you won't need a break. Yeah, okay. Okay, I have uh, the, the most important question, Rao. Uh, in 2003, uh, all the European countries, they, have, they were facing recessions, right? And uh, the, the economy was collapsed. But why Germany, how Germany survived? You have five minutes. Can you make it for five minutes? Wow. Well, seriously, seriously. This question in five minutes is like this question alone needs it's like 20 videos then, by then, then, then we can take, take, a, take, a, take a break if you want. Uh, okay, simplest question is that uh, German economy is based on... Okay, so let's say you work for a German company and talk about like small companies here. Majority of German companies are not the huge companies. The vast majority of them are the middle companies. Okay, they have like around 500 employees. These companies specialize in niche products. Okay, niche products for other industries. So let's say the German companies produce the factories that the Chinese use to produce their products. Okay, and they send their engineers to China to make the factory, to create the factory. Then the Chinese will use later to produce all the, you know, toys, whatever products they're going to use. So what happened is that while in the recession in other countries, uh, people, companies started to fire their people. In Germany, they did not do that. They said, okay, because there is a huge collaboration between workers in this kind of companies, because they're more like family owned companies. They decided, okay, we will all go part time and we're not going to fire anyone. So we will reduce our hours from eight hours to five hours. We'll go have all cuts, do you but we're not going Arbeit? to fire anyone. Kurs Arbeit, right? Hmm? Kurs Arbeit, you do you mean? Yeah, Kurs Arbeit. Yeah, Kurs Arbeit. We're not going to let anyone go because once you lose an employee, which a very high skilled employee is it's very unlikely you're going to find that back. So what they decided like, no, we don't want to lose anyone from our world because we're, we need them all at some point. We know it's a recession. We know it's going to be a while, but we can withstand this recession. And then when it does go, we can, you know, go back to full production. But the, in the US and other countries, they have a mentality of, okay, recession, fire everyone. But then once, and then the recession is always, you know, time. So there's always maybe one, two, three, maximum five years recession. So after that, what's going to happen? You want to reproduce, you know, sorry, reproduce. You want to have high production, but all your experts are gone. So it's like you have to find new experts. You have to rebuild the company from scratch because you have no one with you now from the old team because you fired them all, all the experts. So it's going to be harder for you takes longer for you to restart where the German company can say, okay, so today we're going to start as tomorrow, we're going to start eight full hours long shifts. You know, we're going to back to full production. In one day, the German companies can jump back to full production. Other companies will take maybe a few months to jump back. And that is an advantage because then in the market where people want to buy products, if the company says, I'm going to deliver the product next week, and the other company says, well, Call me back in two months till I find someone to produce your product. You're going to buy from the first one who delivers it, you know, in one week. And that's the advantage that German companies have. But still, uh, how did they, they, they survive? I mean, if they they apply course or white method, like with short is the working. You have to remember that Germans, they are notorious in savings. Yes. Companies have a lot of fear because they know the time will come where they need to use the savings. 
uh, American companies, British Canadian companies, they just need, okay, we make profit and then give the profit to the, let's, to let's, the boss let's, and the shareholders. Let, let me add something here, how we understood, understood that Germany is very conscious about savings. Why they're, um, why they're playing games with um, illegal immigrants? Because these people are living in this country, they're doing nothing, and but they're getting getting benefit from, from the getting benefit from the well this is, a, this, is a totally, this is a totally different issue so that's a totally different question it has to do with politics but why, do, why don't they speak about this this uh, this uh, uh, deporting these peoples previously you know, again again this is a, a like there are two things that are not related so you cannot put two things together where there is no relationship between them whatsoever so the illegal immigration and what they do to asylum seekers and all of that, that's a totally different topic that has nothing to do with this particular question because they are not related. So well, I'm, I'm focusing on of, saving the money. So they, they just, uh, when they, is, they talk about saving the money, they always think uh, the, the new West, how can they save the money? Maybe they think they're deporting the uh, illegal immigrant, maybe have some positive impact on the economy. That's why maybe they want to, it's not right, okay? Uh, that is like a, the idea is totally wrong in so many ways that are not related whatsoever. Thanks so much for clarifying because I, I I thought like that, but it's still you're most welcome. So um, uh, how about taking a break because we have only two minutes and then we're gonna start again. Is that possible? Okay. <laughs>